So recently on this channel I talked about a website called NeoCities which is a bit of a throwback to GeoCities, an old website hosting platform and uh, I really really liked it because it allowed you to basically uh, build websites in their original code the way that we did it over 10 years ago and nowadays people might turn to WordPress or, or Wix or um, in any number of the self-hosted solutions when it comes to putting together a website. But um, I've got to say, uh, since talking about NeoCities on this channel, I've put together my own website, a sort of supplementary website for this channel, if you will. So I'll introduce you to it today. It is far from complete. It is, of course, under construction, as was the way with all sort of 90s based websites. <laughs> There's always a, like, it's under, under construction, it'll get there. Um, but it's just really somewhere where I can put up links and any supplementary text for any of the videos that I put out here or any thoughts that I might have. And uh, yeah, today I just want to talk a little bit about the philosophy of the website itself. I will probably write something to accompany it at some point. But I really wanted to put this together as really a, a project for fun, uh, just as a bit of a nostalgia trip back to when we used to put together GeoCities websites. Uh, and I recommend anyone who's either you know interested in learning how to code or just wants to keep their skills in check or whatever, this is just a great way to do it. So as you can see here, I have completely disregarded style. And I don't mean that in the sense that I've just thrown all style out the window and, and done my own thing. I've actually decided not to embed or implement any uh, style sheets or even any sort of change in, in the default um, because um, I don't need to. Um, I could put together, I could change the font a little bit, I could uh, change some of the colors, I could change some of the layout a little bit, but really the traditional default web layout is something that is incredibly fast to load and that's one of the things that I really want to focus on when it comes to this website. Nothing slows a website down more than graphics, embedded video, all that nasty JavaScript that script that tracks all the websites that you visit on. This is just really you know what I want it to say and nothing else. And as you can see I've got it up here in the Brave browser. It took 0.1 one second to load. That's very, very fast. And as you can see here, I can click on the two other pages that I've done for this website, uh, where I've just drawn up a list of free and open source application recommendations. I might split this into categories later on as it builds, and I've only got four entries uh, as of recently. I've got Audacity, which is what I use to edit the sound on these videos, mostly to, to take out the background noise. My PC actually has quite a large fan on it, uh, just to keep it all cool. But um, and you can hear that a little bit in the microphone, but I try and use Audacity to take some of that out. Etcher is a great little Electron app for burning um, ISOs, and I actually quite like Etcher for a number of reasons. One, good use of Electron apps. Two, good use of app images. Three, rather useful package uh, that's nice that it's portable as well. You can just put the app image onto like a USB drive, and you've always got that ability uh, no matter what Linux-based operating system that you're on. Although, of course, with app images, I think I am told that if you want app images to work in Arch, there is a library that you have to install, but it's quite, you know, it's there. It's just a, uh, how's it going now? Sudo uh, Pacman dash capital S space, and then there's the, the library name, and it's as simple as that. App images, I really want them to take off now. I, like, I know there's, like, an advocate. App images are one of those things where there's always an advocate for them in the comment section of any video where you talk about any uh, cross-platform package management tool. But they're really that good. The only issue with app image is just, is just that they're not adopted, and the, the the widespread adoption. Some people have rightly said that, well, yeah, but faffing around with like t files themselves is something that's off-putting to newcomers, which really I don't wholeheartedly agree with because there are plenty of newcomers to computers in general that are happy with the file system. So if you treat app fold, um, programs like they're files, you're hardly throwing new users off into the deep end. But of course, you can make a... Um, you can make a, a good front-end UI for it. But it's great because it allows you you know, easy access to previous versions. So with complex programs like Caden Live, the fact that they've brought it out into an app image is a godsend for people like me. It means that I don't just have to rely on Linux distributions where this particularly complex piece of software works. Plenty of, of Linux distributions bundle Caden Live, but there's not really that many that actually bundle it in a usable way that's out of the box. Sometimes it takes a lot of faff to get, to get going, even on something like... Um, 
I was going to say Manjaro. The KDE version of Manjaro actually comes with Kden Live installed and works quite well. And actually, in the KDE and Plasma desktop, Kden Live works quite nicely. Anyway, getting a little bit off track here, but this does what these rambly videos are kind of uh, about, really. And if you go into NeoCities.org itself, it does actually promote a few of the websites built using its platform. And boy, some of them are throwback to to old school web web design. And they actually load up and run really quite fast. It's just some of the brave color choices and some of that, that that lime green text on the background of of like uh, you know the universe of stars you know the starry background lime green text and uh, just talking about some of the things you like that's kind of what I wanted out of this website but maybe less of the her, the 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 color clashes who knows maybe one day you might visit the site and realize that there is a starry background with lime green text and then moving gifs uh, obviously i decided not to do um not to to put G uh, moving gifs in this website because i wanted to keep the bandwidth down the load t times down um and yeah you know a little bit of pointless nostalgia is is kind of a bit of fun from time to time but really with this website i mean look at it it loaded up in 0 0.05 like it's so uh, like you're really the the biggest determining factor as to how fast this website loads. It, it, it's not even you know it's not based on on the website itself. It's based on things like traffic and and how quickly the you know server can um, can can talk to the client and all this kind of stuff. You know it's it's all the other external factors now that are largely affecting the speed of which this website loads. It's you know fast. Look at that lightning fast. And here you go. This is the how to get RSS URLs from channels and playlists. So there'll be more stuff like this on my uh, on this website here. Uh, so if there is a like, if I do a how to, but usually with how tos, when I look for how tos, I tend to stay away from YouTube. I, I prefer text manuals. Don't know if that's just my way of learning or whatever. It, it, I, I like it because it allows you to go uh, through all the instructions, at, you know, in, at, at your own pace, and um, and it allows you to reread parts really, you know, sort of really conveniently and and what have you. So if I do and how to online, it would be nice if I could, or a how to in a video, it'd be really nice if I could sort of just add in some of the uh, the elements in text form. For example, of course, with a lot of um, the URLs and a lot of the information, it's really worth copying and pasting it. So you do kind of want that. I mean, I very much see this website as my calling card to the internet, and I want it to reflect me um, sort of all the way through and not just in terms of what I want to overtly say, but I want it to be, you know, easy to uh, easy to use, fast to load, looks uh, usable on all devices. And in fact, I've got a window here. Uh, same Brave browser, also loaded in 0 0.05 seconds, of it just in a, in a much more narrow frame. And it looks good. The text wraps around the frame nicely. Um, and the same goes for mobile as well. And I want the site easily visible or easily accessible by people with accessibility issues, which means making it look good on uh, text-only displays, which means that it might be, um, you know, it might have to go through a text-to-speech um, program. So therefore, it's worth laying a website out in a way that makes logical sense from that point of view as well. And quite frankly, if you just loaded this up in links. In fact, I can uh, load it up in links. Uh, I'll do so just now. So if I just uh, and there you go. So I just loaded up quickly there in links in just a standard terminal, and it basically looks the same. It looks pretty much the same as it does in links, as it does on the desktop, and as it does uh, in that uh, small narrow window, as well as it does on the mobile. Um, yeah, like I say, I'm really happy with it, and it sort of demonstrates some of the values that I feel towards code and the internet in general. Um, uh, because when you look at the code itself, and which we can do here, the code itself is incredibly simple. Anyone can learn it. It's no, it's really not much more difficult than markup. And I don't think it's any more difficult than learning how to use WordPress or any of the other uh, content management systems. In fact, I've used content management systems uh, for companies that are incredibly complex to use, where, you might, where, where it would just be easier if everyone just worked on an HTML file and then all just chipped in. You have one common style sheet to link it all together. But... Um, it just seems that the the world has not gone down this road, and I want to do my part at least to try and to try and just bring the internet back to its roots of something that is efficient, something that works fast, and something that doesn't try and over engineer a solution um, simply when it just needs to display a small bit of information. We're talking about what is effectively something that is more straightforward and simpler than a word document, and we've had word documents around for quite some time now.
But even when it comes to longer form content, uh, I still feel that you can do a lot just with the basic coding of HTML. Um, I know for things like blogs, it might seem intuitive to then use WordPress, and that's really what WordPress is really designed for, is the use uh, or the uh, production of more dynamic content, like blogs, like websites, like stuff that gets updated significantly more regularly. Um, and there I would say that's where you probably would want to use WordPress. There are a number of cases uh, where I do just go to wordpress.com and set up a website because that's the fastest and easiest way to do something in that uh, in that capacity. And WordPress itself is an open source piece of kit. So, um, and, and, and they make it very, very easy to install it um, all over the place really and, and use uh, your own hosted solutions. So WordPress is definitely a good open source citizen in that regard, but I'm really just looking for something a little bit more um, low level, I guess, a little bit more, more simpler. But even when it comes to longer form content like blogs, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to deal with large file sizes again, because I've got here a text only version of Jane Austen's Emma. Um, it's a book I've read a number of times and um, it's really quite long. I think it's about 160 words. It's uh, 160,000 words, I'm sorry, or somewhere in that ballpark. And, um, and this text file is less than a megabyte in size. You can get an entire novel for less than a megabyte in size because uh, uh, Emma is not a particularly short novel. And uh, yeah, so this, I mean, this is the text only. This is the plain text version of my website. And it is, uh, yeah, I mean, it really doesn't use that much code anyway. So it's only a fraction of that size. And if you actually look at the, um, the text for Jane Austen's Emma, it's all there. 2.27 seconds to load. So it really didn't take that much longer to load anyway. Um, and it's a far cry from the, you know, four megabyte websites that uh, CNN and other news sites are, are throwing up. And I think news sites are particularly the worst when it comes to tracking software as well as advertising and all that kind of stuff. They just bundle so much JavaScript in their websites and you don't need it. Nor do you need a full front page uh, image of a hipster drinking coffee or something like that. You, you know, I think a website needs to focus on the very, you know, purpose, the specific purpose uh, the that it wants to set out to do the inf you know and and to distill the information that it wants to portray and um and doing so through code i think is the simplest and in many ways most effective way of doing this so um i think i'm going to wrap up there that's just a few rambly thoughts i had on not only my website but um you know sort of the state of the internet as well i mean most websites nowadays, you know, we are literally talking about, you know, megabytes of data as opposed to kilobytes. This whole website, this whole website on uh, on NeoCities, uh, this is about 17 kilobytes, and that includes the image that I have on, um, on this side here, yeah. So, uh, oh, that almost took a whole second to load. Mm. Taking it, because it's got an image there as well, um, and um, well, it's not too big one. And I've actually even turned down the um, the the the, uh, the quality of that JPEG just to make sure that it loads up particularly quickly. So I think I am going to wrap it up there. I just wanted to put a video together today talking a little bit about the benefits of lean and responsive websites and why you know, like a website doesn't necessarily need to be the be all and end all of uh, of whatever it is that you're trying to do. It's really just a way of portraying information, and it can do. That that very effectively in very straightforward and simple ways. So uh, that's about it for me today. That's about it from me today, rather. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.